Hi all, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be discussing about Palamuru Rangaradi Lift Irrigation Project. Right, this is the most important project for Telangana, especially for the southern region, which is drought mode. Right, hence it is of vital importance for those areas, along with the areas that are in Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation and also some industrial areas. So in this video, I'll be dealing with the following things: that is the scope of the project and the cost of the project, and next is how the water is put to use and how this will help Telangana. So this is important for geography and also if you are interested in learning about the geography of Telangana as a normal citizen then also it is important. Why? Because it is it is desirable that you know what is happening in your state and it is fine that you should be aware of the things going around you. Also if you are preparing for exams like UPSC, TSPSC and APPSC this topic would definitely help you in various ways. Right? So this is the pictorial representation of Palamuru Rangaradi lift irrigation project. So this is not the entire project but a part of project that is under construction. Just to show you the picture, I have put this picture here, right? So if we jump into the project details, this scheme is for irrigation, right? So irrigating lands that are in Nagarkarnal, Mahbubnagar, Vikarabad, Rangaradi, Nalgunda districts. Okay. So the earlier IACAT target was for 10 lakh acres, but later it has been revised to 12.30 lakh acres. So of this 12.30 lakh acres, 10 lakh acres are in Ernstwell, Mahbubnagar district. And the rest 2.3 lakh acres are in Rangaradi district and Nalgonda district. Along with the irrigation, it also provides drinking water. Right? So drinking water to villages, GHMC and industrial areas also. In this project, the target will be 2 TMC per day. Okay. So every day 2 TMC will be lifted for 60 days during the flood season. That is the peak rainy season when the floods occur. Of this 2 TMC, 1.5 TMC will be used for the Palamuru Rangaradi lift irrigation project and other 0.5 TMC will be used for Dindi lift irrigation project. So from where the water will be lifted is Sri Shalam Reservoir on Krishna River, okay, near Yellow Kolapur. So from here, the water will be lifted, and through five stages, the water reaches to K P Lakshmi Devapali Kundur in Rangaradi district, okay. From here onwards, it will flow through gravity. There is no need of using pumps. Also, the cost of the project is estimated to be at thirty-five thousand two hundred crores as on twenty fifteen. This is the brief understanding of the project. Also, this project will be inaugurated on September sixteen by Honorable C M K C R. So this will be ex executed in two phases. Of total 21 packages in two phases. The phase one will focus on drinking water for 1226 villages in 70 models. The phase two is for irrigation requirements in drought prone districts. Okay. Also, CM sorry, CM would be dedicating the project for nation. So this will transform the fate of southern Telangana where droughts and there is deficit of water. As a part of phase one, there will be total of six balancing reservoirs. So these six balancing reservoirs will be at Anjanagiri, Viranjaneya, Venkatadri. Raya, Udandapur and KP Lakshmi Dev Pali. Okay, so these six balancing reservoirs will be constructed as part of phase one constructions. So this is the text related to the scheme of the project. I will try to show all this text in the form of diagram so that you can clearly remember. Right. So here is the diagram. So this is the first balancing reservoir that is Anjanagiri balancing reservoir. So the stage one pump house. Okay, the first pump house will pump water into this balancing reservoir. From here it reaches Viranjaneya balancing reservoir. That has the capacity of 6.55 TMC through stage 2 pump house. From Viranjanaya, it will reach to Venkatadri balancing reservoir that has 16.74 TMC of capacity through the stage 3 pump. Okay. And next, from Venkatadri, the water reaches to Kurumurthi Raya that has a capacity of 17.34 TMC. From Kurumurthi Raya, the next stop will be at Udandapur that has 15.91 TMC of capacity through stage 4 pump house. Right. So from stage 4, it will reach finally to KP Lakshmi Devapalli Balancing Reservoir that has limit of 2.80 TMC through stage 5 pump. Right. So from Lakshmi Devapalli, again the water will move to Usman Sagar, Usman Sagar and Himayat Sagar, where these two provide water for twin cities. Okay. So from here, the water flows through normal gravity. There is no need of pumping or the minimal pumping is required. So this is the understanding of balancing reservoirs, how the water flows from Anjanagiri that is first point at Nagar Karnul to last point that is KP Lakshmi Devapalli in Rangaradi district. Right. And also if you look at the details of the lifts, okay, as we have seen right, five lifts that are helping. One is at Yalur, the next one is at Yadula and the third one is at Watam and fourth one is at Udandapur and last one is at KP Lakshmi Devapalli. So here the pump that has highest capacity is at 145 megawatts okay so these are known as the bahubali pumps because of their large capacities okay and the pumping capacities varies at 85 cubics and these three are at 75 cubics and the last one 
which does not have the requirement to pump so much water will pump 55 cubic so that is the reason why these pumps are leased okay so these are the details of the lifts and the next one is reservoirs we have already seen all these reservoirs right so these are the place where these reservoirs are located so you can get a question related to this as a match the following so this is the bundle length so how many kilometers does the bundle length is this is mentioned here this is frl okay and the next one is capacity this tmc we have already seen corresponding to this reservoirs and also this is the eye cut so the amount of land thus these reservoirs will irrigate the first one that is venkatadri venkatadri is at 1.39 lakh acres kurumurthi raya at 1.90 lakh Udandapur at 4.88 lakh acres this is the highest and kp lakshmi devpalli that is 4.13 lakh acres so totally it would amount to 12.30 lakh acres right so this is about the reservoirs and their capacities and the next one is land acquisition here it shows how much land was required for the project and how much they could acquire till a certain point of time okay so in nagar tarnul there was total uh, requirement of 11892 acres in manapati it was 4201 and in mahabub nagar it is 10757 so these are the land patches that are needed for this project right and here it shows the acquired land how much was acquired and land that has to be acquired so as on today the project has been totally completed and the land acquisition also has been completed and this is rehab rehabilitation so if somebody have given their lands to the project so they will get the rehab package from the government so totally there are three villages affected and the number of hamlets affected here are 20 and the households it is 2481 and the population so totally 11025 that is 11025 people were affected due to this project so they all have been compensated to the rehabilitation method so this is the rehab amount that they have provided that is 9.55 crores to the structured value and the additional amount for 2 bhk so they have been given a house and along with that they have been also given money the total amount tallies to 79.68 crores this is our under package for the people who have given their lands for the project as we have already seen the i cut which is covered through this project in mahabub nagar it is 2.8 lakh hectares in rangareddy it is 1.09 lakh hectares and in nalgonda it is 12000 hectares totally it tallies to 4.04 lakh hectares so this is in hectares so when you come when you compare it to acres or convert it tallies to 12.30 lakh acres right so here the most of the mandals are from mahabub nagar next is rangareddy and the last is nalgonda as we have already discussed the irrigation will be for the districts that are drought prone and drinking water for the hyderabad city and industrial use usage in all these above districts that is mahabub nagar nagar and nalgonda district here the submergence and land required this we have already covered in the tables in the previous explanations so this is just the text representation of the tables which i have explained and the power required for this project to run is 2944 megawatts right and the total energy consumption of the project is 4366 million units per annum okay so all this electricity will be provided by this comes of telangana state so this is very huge consumption of electricity since the pumps are of highest capacity we need more electricity to run those pumps and here the cost as we have seen earlier it is evaluated at 35200 crores and here the cost to benefit ratio that is 1.23 so this cost to benefit ratio tells us how beneficial the project is and how profitable the project will be in the future so suppose if you are spending 100 rupees so how much profit you get out of that 100 rupees that will be the cost to benefit ratio so suppose if you are spending 1 rupee here you will be getting 1.23 paise right 1 rupee 23 paise on the 1 rupee you are investing in the project so that is the cost to benefit ratio of this project so this is the important thing how this will help telangana right so in southern districts southern districts include nalgonda mahabub nagar rangareddy okay so these are drought prone areas so if there is no proper rainfall these districts face the huge deficit of water requirement okay so the thing over here is all these districts right so these are adjacent to krishna river but the water cannot get to these areas why because these areas are at the higher place so here if you look over here the river will be flowing like this and all these areas are present here so in order to give water to these areas we need the pumps okay so that is how we lift the water from river krishna and provide to this districts okay so this is due to the 
geographical thing and the one more thing here the gravity will not be available hence we have only one option so lift irrigation schemes are only the answer for this projects we do not have any alternatives other than lift irrigation project for these areas so as we have seen right the cost to benefit ratio is less 1.23 that is what we have seen but you might say uh, that the benefits are very low when compared to our investments but the thing is that there are no other solutions other than constructing these lift irrigations right as we have seen in due to the geographical reasons and also the electricity consumption is also high with these projects okay so first thing is these drought prone areas will get water along with the drinking water for twin cities and also industrial use for all the three districts okay so irrigation drinking water and industrial use so when you put all these things in one plan and way with the investments so it is on a good side considering the situations when you have no infrastructure right so earlier these projects were planned but they were not implemented by the administrators pro properly and they could not be completed these districts have faced water issues for a long time right and even deadly effects like fluoresis has affected lakhs of people in this region so that is the reason why these projects will be considered for these districts as the important sources in many ways right so that is the importance of palamuru rangaredi lift irrigation project hope i have addressed all the things related to the project if you have any issues understanding the concept please try to post your questions in the comment box i'll be able to reply to your comments thank you